All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earth Master out here about uh, 9.33 p.m. California time. Friday, January 17th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.2 earthquake here outside the Ridgecrest area. Noticing a little bit of swarming going on here across the Ridgecrest area. Uh, and along with the West Coast in general, seeing some elevated seismic activity out here uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, as far as earthquake activity above the 2.5 level, well, got a number of them. Looks like about six of them here. Uh, just after midnight, uh, a number of earthquakes in the 2.8 to the uh, 3 range. There's 2.8 there on the west side of the valley, San Joaquin Valley. One south of the border. Uh, a bunch of earthquakes up north here around the northern uh, area of the plate boundary, southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust region. And uh, this area has been... Uh, Bumping with a, a bunch of earthquakes out here today. Continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, let me give a quick glance at the uh, latest trimmer map here. See what we have for Cascadia trimmer, which, uh, wow, that's a pretty decent number here, but confined to the Oregon area um, underneath the area of uh, Salem, Portland area underneath the uh, the land here, about 35, 45 kilometers deep. No, uh, not really seeing any uh, subsequent earthquake activity follow following that trimmer, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Definitely elevated here at the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, the the uh, Bay Area, Northern California here. A handful of smaller quakes on the Calaveras Fault. Nothing uh, going on there for now as far as major activity. Uh, elevated movement here across the Ridgecrest area. Extreme Southern California, getting a number of earthquakes out here across various fault systems. Nothing big, but uh, noticing an increase in earthquake, uh, the multitude counts out here. So watch the, uh, you know, obviously anything can happen at any given time, folks. So we got to keep an eye on the San Andreas Fault for sure. It's uh, we're living in that time period here where I think we're going to see that uh, eventually rupture down there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up on that seismograph state or the uh, uh, earthquake map. So let's check out the seismograph station, see what we have. Pretty clear out there for a super volcano. Um, really not seeing a whole lot of anything out there. Really no earthquake activity. Not uh, a whole lot of anything going on across that super volcano. It's quiet for now. Oil fields of Texas still getting hit with some uh, earthquake activity. Got a fairly moderate earthquake here outside the North Island, New Zealand region along the southern end of the Kermadec Trench for a 5.0 coming in here within the last hour. As far as localized activity there across New Zealand, uh, not so much down here. Looks like South Island area had a 3.4 earlier today. Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. A number of earthquakes here across the plate boundary, New Zealand right there in the middle of it all. Uh, most of the movement today is noted. Across the Java Trench here, Indonesia Islands region, with a, uh, a kind of a forward migration here northward around the Andaman Sea with some recent activity, uh, including this 4.9 just off the coast here of Sumatra. That uh, area obviously can produce some big earthquakes and it's uh, kind of making its way northward here as far as that most recent activity. So we'll continue to watch that. Maybe a little segment up here off the Andaman Sea region. In between these two areas of interest, uh, the Japan region, as far as the, uh, any major earthquake activity across that region there, not a whole lot. Got some older quake activity, but uh, it's going to be these two quakes there from this morning and one from last night. Nothing else to report there across the Nankai Trough. And uh, still just trying to get, keep my voice here, folks. I'm not quite back to normal, um, but it's getting there. It's getting better. Alaska area, some older quake activity here in the last 24 hours. Definitely seismically active out here. Um, more so, I would say, late last night, early this morning. Throughout the day today, though, just general small microquake activity across the region. And again, some of these earthquakes there from early this morning or late last night in the, in the uh, 2 and 4 range. Uh, let's see here. Hawaii, the big island of Hawaii out here. Anything major going on? Doesn't look like it. This was the uh, view this morning. 
Let's go ahead and check out the uh, summit area right now of Kilauea Volcano. Still fountaining out there. Two distinct areas there across that uh, the crater wall region of uh, Kilauea Volcano up at the summit. Filling in quite nicely the, uh, the crater floor. Fairly well lit up out there. And it's uh, been staying pretty consistent out here in terms of the eruption. So they, they could go on for, for a number of days, even a number of weeks out here. Uh, which they're you know normally famous for uh, as far as those long durations go out there across Kilauea Volcano. And of course, a steady decline indicating that depletion of magma from below. But obviously, it looks like there's a pretty good amount underneath the area allowing for the uh, continual fountaining there across the Kilauea Volcano. No major changes there that I can see across the area in terms of any... Um, Further escalation. Let's see. Anything else here? Uh, pretty good cluster across the uh, Solomon Islands area, it looks like. A couple four stirring up. Uh, let's see. Mediterranean twos and threes out there. Really nothing major going on. No new activity to report across the Ethiopia Rift Valley out there. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Getting some uh, further swarming out here across the Prue-Chili Trench with a bunch of four stirring up today. Um, so a mix, definitely a mixed bag of uh, earthquake activity out here across the globe today. Seismically active, yes. Uh, but far as the largest magnitude uh, so far today, looks to be a five-pointer there that came in within the last hour across the Kermadec Islands. Really no... Uh, no big earthquake activity today, but who knows? That could change here at any given time, right? Um, flaring activity. We are looking at an elevated flare threat here. 30% chance for an X flare. M flare at 70. We got uh, a number of sunspots up here. 3964 that has pretty much popped up out of the blue. Well, that's going through some type of uh, stage here where it's uh, growing getting complex and then it dies off a little bit there's still quite a bit of intermixing here of these different colors here and the uh, polarity that uh harbors some potential for some x flare activity still uh not really concerned with this area fairly uh separate core here between this massive region not really expecting too much air from that uh from that area so i think the main one right now is going to be uh this area over here 39 64 is the uh, primary suspect there of all the recent M flare activity. Number of M flares here in the last 24 hours, as noted, uh, and that was with the development there of that new sunspot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten M flares or so uh, in the last 24 hours from that uh, that sunspot region. Pretty decent sized sunspots out here, but. Uh, yeah, I think the main one we need to watch is going to be 3964. Uh, no major roars there in the forecast for now, folks. And I don't think uh, that uh, flaring activity produced any type of CME activity that, you know, CME eruptions uh, that would have an effect here on the aurora forecast. So it's fairly minimal for now. Um quick glance here at the numerical model weather trends well a lot of cold air coming down so hopefully you guys got plenty of firewood some ice and snow coming down here across the areas of the south as we head towards early to middle next week looks like a dandy of a winter storm there across the area with expected snowfall there throughout louisiana and all the southern states pretty crazy none of that going on out here across the west coast unfortunately Got a dominant high pressure system. And man, I just, uh, you know, even this morning or late last night when we're doing the update, it showed some type of pattern change potentially taking place out here uh, towards the end of uh, January. That has disappeared with a dominant high pressure system out here across the West Coast again. I don't, I don't like that. Um, that's not cool. Even the uh, Pacific Northwest is getting gypped on the precipitation out here for this winter. Uh, check out this. Look at this model. This looks more like a, I don't know what, 
definitely not a wintertime pattern out here for the West Coast. This is our rainy season. We should have rain falling right now. Shouldn't be clear. No measurable, no, no measurable precipitation there in the forecast. Look at that. Nothing from Washington, Oregon, California. Wow, man. That's not good. So uh, that means that the drought's going to be uh, amplified here in the coming weeks across the West Coast. We'll check out the drought mo monitoring system here. Look at that. We haven't been that way in uh, quite a few years. We've had uh, some pretty decent winters out here with sufficient rainfall and snowfall up in the higher elevations. But wow, can it change so quick out here. The drought intensity model here shown some moderate uh, and even some severe to extreme areas seeping into Northern California uh, and also down in Southern California. It's been that way in Southern California for uh, for about 10 months or so. They haven't had any rain. Uh, and this is at the surface level. If you look at the deeper regions here, still not quite hitting drought conditions here at the deeper levels. That's because we had a lot of rainfall back in December through the Sacramento Valley, but uh, it's catching up up in the mountains and... Uh, Wow, crazy. Look at this moisture anomaly map. Uh, deeper regions and surface areas all across the West Coast. It's drying up out here. It is drying up, folks. So uh, that's going to increase the fire danger, obviously, across the area. Southern California, not so much in Northern California yet, but uh, that could definitely come in. A uh, quick glance at the uh, active fire conditions there across Southern California. We'll take a look here at the Palisades fire. Uh, that fire is currently, um, uh, let's see, let me zoom in here. I'm going to be a little bit closer, I guess. 39% uh, containment, 23,000 acres. Really no advancement going on. Haven't detected any hot spots out here in uh, a couple days. So that's good news there to get a handle on that. Uh, the Eaton fire over here is just about out. 65% containment, 14,000 acres. Uh, no hot spots being detected out there either from uh, either of those, uh, you know, those two deadly fires out there in Southern California. Um, auto fires out. Uh, there was a fire up here across some uh, power plant, uh, some lithium power plant up there. Look at those hot spots being detected. Obviously, it looks like that fire is still going. Um but it, well, let's see here. The Monterey County Sheriff's Office has lifted all evacuation orders for the Moss Landing uh, Vistra Power Plant fire. So even though it's picking up some, well, this is in the last 24 hours here. So this may have just been from this morning, but it looks like all uh, evacuation orders have been lifted across the region which is uh, good news. Northern California, no fires up here. A couple prescribed fires. Uh, looks like there's a little one up here. Up in the mountains, off the uh, Feather Falls area. Ah, but that's uh, stopped. Forward progress has been stopped there. All right, folks. Um, I am going to call it. I'm pretty tired here. Just uh, been a long day. I guess we'll watch things here this evening, see how uh, everything plays out as far as earthquake activity goes. I still think we need to watch, you know, Northern California. It's got some uh, interesting activity over here in the last couple months. Nothing new going on here across the Blanco Fracture Zone or uh, the Gorda Ridges, uh, even though there's been a, a number of quakes out here. Sometimes they put these earthquakes after the fact, um, days later on the earthquake catalog book so we don't even really know about them until they do add them uh, eventually but we've seen a number of earthquakes out here in the last 30 days uh, even some out in the Gorda ridges amplifying the stress and strain out here across the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone and uh, a, a lot of deeper activity down here in northern california indicating that further pressurization there across that subduction zone called the cascadia all right, folks, um, I'm out of here. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Enjoy your Friday night. The weekend is upon us. Make sure you stay safe out there and uh, stay warm. If you're out there where winter normally, well, where winter's taking place, I should say. Not out here in California. Uh, definitely out here in this area of the country, though. Kind of uh, just a sad winter for us so far out here along the West Coast. 
All right, take care, folks. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later for the Saturday morning update.